In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an appointment setting receptionist for your business in under 11 minutes. Let's go. So the first thing we'll want to do is log into retail. If you don't have an account, you can create one. It's free. From this agent's homepage, you can click create an agent up here. We'll do a single prompt agent and we will start from a blank template. So up here, we've got some details about the agent. Here's its name, which you can modify by clicking the little pencil. You've got the agent ID, the large language model ID, the estimated cost per minute, and the latency. Below, we've got the model selection. We're just using GP240. I found that to be the best value in terms of cost, accuracy, and speed. So we'll just keep it at that. There's a lot of good voice options you can select. I've been using Grace from Eleven Labs, but you can choose any voice you want. You can even get a little sample by just clicking the play arrow. It'll give you a little preview of what their voice sounds like. Once you've decided the voice, you can click use voice. In this section below here is where we're going to load in our prompt. I'm just going to paste a prompt I had pre-made. If you need to create your own prompt, I highly recommend using ChatGPT just to create a boilerplate prompt and then just modifying the information as you see fit changing the information to suit your own business and then modifying the task for whatever suits your use case. So you can see here, we're giving it a role, we're telling it who it is, we're giving it some context, could even add to that, letting it know that it's an inbound agent receiving calls. We've got the task section, giving it step-by-step -step instructions to how to handle the call. We'll go into that a little bit later. And then we've just got some notes giving it a personality, some details that don't fit into the other sections. And as you test and iterate, you can add to this notes section to make sure it is doing what you want it to do. Below, we've got the welcome message. We'll go ahead and adjust this since this is an inbound voice agent that we're building. So it'll be the AI initiates. We're not using dynamic variables. We're just gonna use a static message. So we'll replace that with something a little bit more specific to the prompt. And then we'll click save to make sure everything is saved. Now over here to the right of the prompt, you have additional settings you can set up for the agent. There's a knowledge base section where you can add further information if you have a lot more information than can fit in the prompt. All of these settings I haven't fiddled with too much. They seem to be about right based on the testing that I've done. But of course, you can play around with them and see how they are working for you. And then at the top here, we have probably the most important section, the functions. This is where you actually give the agent the ability to do what you want it to do. In this case, scheduling appointments. Without these, it's just a large language model that will just talk to the customer without having the ability to actually do anything. To add a function, you can click add here. And you can see there's already a few pre-made functions that retail has loaded in there for us. You can also create your own custom function as well. Now, the really cool thing about retail is you can see here, it has this check calendar availability function as well as the book function using cal.com. On other platforms, you actually have to code these yourself, which can be quite tricky to get right. But here on retail, they have them natively built in. So that's super helpful. So for this appointment setter, we are going to use these built-in functions. So we'll click this one to add the check calendar availability function. We've got the name up here, the description, and this is actually used by the model to determine when to use this function. So it is relevant. You can add to these descriptions if you feel you need to give further guidance to the model. And then it's asking for an API key and an event type ID from cal.com. So let's navigate over to cal.com. If you're not familiar, cal.com is a calendar service app similar to Calendly. It has more open integrations with APIs, which makes it a little bit easier to work with programmatically. And if you don't have an account, you can just sign up for one. It's free. And from this page, in order to get your API key, you'll navigate down into the bottom left and click on settings. And then on this menu on the left-hand side, you'll click API keys. You can just click add to add an API key, give it a name. You can set, if you want, an expiration date. We'll just set it to never expire and click save. Now here's our API key. This will be the only time we'll, we're able to access it. So we'll copy to the clipboard. And just for this one time, I recommend pasting it into a temporary notepad because we will be using it twice. One for the check availability function and the other for the booking function. And that way you don't have to create two API keys for each separate function. Now we'll take this back to retail. We'll paste that into the API key section. Now for this event ID, we'll navigate back into Calendly. We'll go back to the main page here. I've already created a random event for this particular demo, this random appointment. And to get the event ID, you'll click on it. And then in the URL up here, you'll see this number after the slash, but before the question mark. 
That's your event type ID. So you can copy this, navigate back to retail, and load that in. We'll update our time zone. You can modify that to whatever time zone is appropriate for you and click save. So what we've just done is added this function so that it can be used by the agent. You can see we have it referenced in our prompt already, but previously there was no actual function with that name for it to use. Now that we've added it, it'll have the ability to call that function. And to add the book appointment function, you just repeat the process by clicking add, book on the calendar, and you just do the exact same thing for this one. So we'll load everything in there, update our time zone, and then click save. So we've got the two main functions for appointment setting in there. I'm also going to add just the end call function. No description needed for this one since it's fairly obvious from the prompt when to use it. And so I'm just going to quickly go through the tasks section here of our prompt to make it clear what's going on. I do want to note this is a super basic template strictly to handle the most basic appointment setting requests. You can absolutely flesh this out to have the agent be able to handle more tasks by adding to the prompt and adding more functions. Like we talked about, you can also add a knowledge base if you want it to be able to answer more complex queries. And also you can even add additional agents so that each agent has its own specific area of expertise and the function that it specifically is taking care of. But in this demo, we're just focusing on appointment setting. That's this agent's only task. And you can see we have a nice flow here. It asks for their name. It asks for the purpose of the appointment. It asks when they're available, and then it calls that check calendar availability function. Now, in the next step, once a suitable time has been agreed upon, it calls the book appointment function. And this next line isn't strictly necessary. This is just something I added after my own testing. What's going on here is that when you book an appointment through cal.com, because it is a web-based appointment service, you do need to input an email address. And so the agent will prompt the customer for their email address. And this is okay. The customer can just say some email address and the agent will load it in and use that as the email address. But in my experience, these voice agents are absolutely terrible at getting the correct email address. And it's not really their fault or anything. It's just because it's audio, you have to deal with the whole transcription and making sure it's completely accurate. There can be background noise, the call can be grainy, names aren't a common vocabulary, and people's email addresses are usually have their name in them. So really it's just this big mess where you might have to reprompt the customer 10 times to make sure you get the right email address. So for those reasons, I don't like having these voice agents collect email addresses. It would be way more efficient to just send them some form after the call if you really needed the email address and ask them to simply type it in. That would be a far easier automation to set up than trying to get the agent to perfectly collect it each time. So in this case, because we are setting up a dental appointment center, and really most of the use cases for a voice agent of this type is going to be in-person meetings, the email address probably isn't super relevant. Something more relevant might be a phone number, which is a lot easier to collect if you wanted to add that in here. Or like I said, you could just create a simple form after the call that you maybe text them, have them enter their email that way. So in order to prevent the agent from asking the customer for their email, I've added this section to the step, but it does require an email address to book the appointment. So I've instructed it to use test at gmail.com. I hope Gmail doesn't get on me about that. I guess we'll see. And then we have it repeating the date and time just to confirm. Thanks to the customer for calling and then ends with the end call. Now, believe it or not, we're actually nearly done completing this appointment setting agent. It is almost fully ready to go. The only thing we still need to do is to just add a phone number so that when someone calls, this agent will pick up and it'll schedule the appointment. And to do that, we can just navigate back to the main menu here. We'll scroll down to phone numbers. To add a phone number, you click this little plus sign. You can just buy a new number right here through retail. I think it's two bucks a month. Or you can import your number using SIP trunking if you already have a number through Twilio. And if you're interested in that, it does require a few additional steps, but I'll link a video from retail down in the comments if you want to follow along. I already have one of my Twilio numbers loaded in here. Right now, you can see it's assigned to the agent I've named Teresa. I'm just going to change that by clicking here. I didn't give the other agent a name. It was just single prompt agent. So we'll update that here. And that is actually it. This agent is now ready to go to begin taking calls and to begin scheduling appointments in your calendar. So let's give this a test run. Hello, this is Grace from Sunny Smiles Dental. How can I assist you today? Hi, I'm looking to schedule an appointment if possible. Alrighty, let's get you all set up. What's your full name? Rob Wynn. Cool, Rob. What's the reason for your visit? Like a cleaning, filling, or something else? 
Oh, just a cleaning. Got it, a cleaning. When are you free to come in? Like any specific day or time in mind. What does he have available next Monday? Let me check what's available next Monday for you. Pam, no slots next Monday, but we do have openings the following Monday, December 23rd, between 1 p.m. and 11 p.m. Does that work for you? Sure. Yeah, let's do the 1 p.m. All right, booking you for Monday, December 23rd at 1 p.m. You're all set for Monday, December 23rd at 1 p.m. Thanks for calling Sunny Smiles Dental, Rob. Have a great day. You too. Bye. So was it successful in booking my appointment? Let's find out. We'll go back to cal.com. We'll go over here to bookings for my random appointment. And there it is, my appointment for Monday at 1 p.m. So guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback, or anything like that, please let me know. Leave them in the comments below. Or just send me a DM. I'd be happy to help. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. You have a good rest of your day.